Hello everyone! Rick and Ryan are at it again. It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I am Rick, as always, joined by Big Show. Show, what's up? What's going on, my friend? How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, You know, it's one of those weeks that's longer than it really should be, and that's probably because last week was a short week. But, you know. Yeah. So far, so good. Every day above ground is a good day, right? That is the truth. Amen and amen. So let's get this interestingly stuff. The app for our English speaking audience. Let's get this interesting <laughs> stuff started. I want to present to you some things that I had to laugh at in the news. And the first one is about a Burger King employee, bro. And it says here in this article, is it going to let me go to the link? It will. Burger King employee gifted candy and pins after working 27 years without missing a single day. Now, I don't know about you, show, but um, if I'm working someplace, I don't want just a pack of lifesavers and a pin. For 27 years you you gonna have to come up off of something something much better than that i mean i don't think that's asking too much for a job 20, 27 years without missing a single day first of all what are you doing working at burger king for 27 years <laughs> right but i will say this depending on how far you move up I mean, that that 27 years may be worth it like what kind of candy was it uh in the photo he was holding up a pack of lifesavers uh-uh for real yeah and just a regular old pen uh it doesn't show the pen so i mean I not that it matters i don't know if it was but... an ink pen or just one of those pins that you can put on your shirt saying i've been here man i can get that for working at walmart for 20 minutes going through the self-checkout line um it says here his name is Kevin Ford. He's been working at Burger King for 27 years without missing a single shift. He works as a cook and a cashier. Okay. We'll get back to that part in a second. Um a photo My recently... door would have came up short that day. I'm just saying. <laughs> Posted a video of himself and unexceptional gift the company gave him for his almost 30 year anniversary. And let's see if the article says anything else here. Did he um, say unexceptional gift or was he thankful? I think the writer said that. Um, like, was the guy overly happy that he got some lifesavers and a pin? Well, the picture of him, you can't tell if he's smiling or not because he has a mask on. Gotcha. And is this in America? This is in America, yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Where at? Does it say? Uh, the picture came from International Airport in Las Vegas. <laughs> so, and here it is. People say you can't keep workers nowadays. He even worked through the early COVID days, never missing a day of work. This union guy's worked at Vegas Airport for over 27 years. He got nothing on his 25th anniversary date, but just look how grateful his employer was. On his 27th year. Um, so he worked at the airport and Burger King? I guess so. Okay. So well, I'm that, assuming that's, he was part that's time a little bit, at, at Burger yeah. King. Yeah. So he never missed a shift. He worked one day a week for 27 years. That does shed a little bit more light on it. Yeah. But I said, if that was your full time job, and I was, like I said, yeah, my jaw would have came up short. 
It says, did Burger King really my give Kevin door? Ford a bag of candy after 27 years of not missing a day at work? To the people online for recognizing him better than his own employer did for his loyalty and hard work. Mm. Yeah, no. Another, I, I, now, th this one here, uh, I, and I won't spend too much more time on this one, but this one here states it best. Another user pointed out that Burger King generates $1.8 billion a year. Let that sink in. $1.8 billion. And they gave this dude a pack of lifesavers. Correct. However, in those situations, Burger King doesn't run that particular store. It's a franchise owner. So the owner is the one that did it. It wasn't Burger King themselves. That is and true. If it and if it was, I'd have been working for Chick-fil-A the next day. <laughs> Give them 27 years and see what happens. I mean, they're they're Christian people. You're liable to get at least two bags of candy. Yeah. I mean, some of these corporations, though, this, this next story is really going to blow your mind. A woman won $43 million on a slot machine. Instead, the casino offered her a steak dinner. Yeah. You, you heard that right. Now, I'm going to read to you the article here. It says, a woman named Katrina Bookman hit the jackpot while playing slot machines at Resorts World Casino in Jamaica, Queens. The number that appeared on her screen said $42.9 It would have been the biggest slot machine payout in the history of American casinos. That is, until the casino claimed that the machine had malfunctioned and they owed her nothing. Now... She took a selfie, and the selfie shows her in front of the machine. It says, pending cash ticket, or printing cash ticket, $42,949,672.76. Please remove your ticket. Now, before I go any further, show, well, let me just go ahead and finish it here. It says, Katrina, Katrina grew up in foster care and was homeless as a teenager, and raising four children of her own. The money would have been more than life-changing. She says she would have used it to help her community and buy a barbershop for her son. According to the casino, it clearly displayed that malfunctions do not lead to winnings. The specific machine Katrina was playing typically carries only a max payout of $6,500. Katrina's legal counsel argues that at the very least, she should be entitled to that much. Now we'll go from there. What are your thoughts? So if it only has a cash payout of seven grand, how did it total 43 point whatever million dollars? Well, they're claiming it malfunctioned. I, but, well, I know what they're claiming, but how would it even calculate that high? Well, if it, first of all, if you're a good lawyer, you already know that it doesn't matter how much is in the machine because it printed out a ticket. Right. So the casinos got to give up the money. That'd be worth following because. Did she take the steak dinner? Because if she did, I'm sure that all bets are off. It, it, it does not say. Um, I, I From the side of it saying that she has legal counsel now, I'm I'm a believe that she did not take the steak dinner. She's she's I mean, trying they, to. They, they're going to have to give me 43 million steak dinners or something like that. Cause see, but here's the thing. If they win this, do you know how many casinos will start to say, Oh um, no, that's a mistake. Yeah. I, I, mm. That's definitely worth following. When did this happen? Uh, the article was printed on Saturday, but I don't know. So when theoretically, maybe in the last few months or so, sometime this year, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. If if the casino wins because of that, yeah, you're right. Every casino in the country is going to claim yeah. that on their on their on their on their uh, slot machines. I mean, because obviously you can't do it as a poker game or. Something like that, but yeah, I mean, but 
and this would definitely set a precedent and i just i just see all the casinos trying to get over once this happens oh yeah Oh man, he won a million dollars. No, it's so fast. Our you machine only won ten dollars, yeah. right? Yeah, no. Because you know, casinos are already in it for themselves. I mean, they're a business, so I get that. Oh yeah. But, you, you're right. I am going to try to continue to follow this story, and I'll let you know if uh, there's an update. And where was the casino at? Uh, it did not say on there. This was just an article. Um, I forget where the article was from, too. I'm gonna I copied and pasted. Let me let me do some research, and I can get, get more information as this story develops. Now, as far as the next story, if somebody tells you, if all you do is eat McDonald's, you're gonna get fat. Give them this story. A man who ate only McDonald's for 100 days completes the challenge and he drops 58 and a half pounds and says, I feel amazing. What do you eat? Now, it says here, TikTok star Kevin McGannis went from French fries to fit guy after taking on a dramatic weight loss diet. And it says he finished... Uh, this unique weight loss challenge, and he's loving the results. The 56-year-old Nashville native, so he's in Nashville, uh, known as Big Mac Coaching on TikTok, made headlines back in February when he announced that he'd be doing, he'd be going on an all McDonald's diet for 100 days, eating nothing but half portions of the fast food chain menu items for every meal. So it looked like he ate a little bit of everything. Uh, but if you notice, it says half portions too. So that that reads a little bit into it. But he said change came fast. Uh, he started at 238 pounds, dropping nearly 30 pounds in a little over 30 days. And his wife of 32 years, Melody, even decided to join him for the remaining 60 days of the challenge. Now, the 100 days came to a close on Thursday, and the final tally, 58 and a half pounds total. And... He went down to 179 pounds. He says he feels amazing. And he was asked, uh, what did you eat? And he said, I ate everything. Now, I don't know if this is sustainable, but. All right. So what is the, if you, if you bought a Happy Meal, just, just say, mm -hmm. is that a, is is that a full portion? Is that one portion? Like what? Well, what is it, a portion? It, it, it says further standards? on here the entire McDonald's menu was on the table. Pick a number. I've eaten everything from Big Macs to quarter pounders with fries. So it doesn't look like he was eating Happy Meals. Um, but it also says that he ate half portions. So if he got the Big Mac meal, he only ate half the Big Mac and probably ate the other half the next day. Probably got the breakfast, only ate half of it, ate the other half the next day. He did replace the soda on the menu with water. Didn't drink any alcohol. Didn't eat any fruit or vegetables aside from the lettuce and tomato on the burgers. The apples in the apple fritter and the blueberries in the blueberry muffin. Now, he also says that he did not snack between meals. So he only ate breakfast, lunch, dinner. And... Um, he says, living by the motto, seek the heat before you eat, meaning don't eat any snacks so you can actually feel when your body is hungry. Uh, though he didn't exercise at all and never counted calories, he saw significant changes in his health after doing blood work. His triglycerides were down 205 points and his cholesterol was down 65 points. His A1C levels also dropped. Now, people ask, can eating a quarter pounder with cheese improve your A1C? And it says it looks like it can because he was a pre-diabetic before and he's down in the healthy ranges now. Okay, I see where he's going with this. Um, the, the half portion thing is what I keep going back to. If you eat half 
of what they serve you every day, then yeah, you are going to lose a little weight, especially if you pack on, I mean, uh, add on to that, the fact that he didn't do any snacks and he didn't drink any of the pop. He only had the water. So when you put all that together. basically starved his body. Yes. So on the surface, it sounds good. All he ate was McDonald's. Well, sort of. All he ate was yeah, the, half of what McDonald's gave him. And the majority, and myself included, and I can speak on this because I'm, you know, pleasantly plump. Uh, but the majority of weight gain is not what you eat. It is what you drink. Because we count calories in things that we actually, the food, nobody takes in consideration a large Dr. Pepper, whatever, and one can of Sprite is 150 calories. So what a large Sprite from McDonald's is probably four cans, three and a half to four cans. So what you're looking at 600 calories just in the freaking drink. Absolutely. So, you, you know, plus with all the dark colas, all the sugar that's in it. Um, but that's where most of people that get rotund, myself included, is because of the drink. Not necessarily the food. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. Now, let's just look at a hamburger, just a basic hamburger. I mean, yeah, there's bread on there. But for the most part, there's beef, and that's assuming that it's 100% ground beef. Even if it's 80-20, I mean, still. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, that's not too healthy until you add all the sauces and stuff like that. I mean, that's not too unhealthy until you add on the sauces and stuff like that. So, I mean, the article mustard, mustard's not a, it no, is mustard's not basically a calorie free. I mean, ketchup a little bit. The pickles aren't going to bother you. Lettuce isn't going to bother you. Tomatoes ain't going to bother you. You know, if you add the bacon, that's going to be bad a little bit. Potato, french fries in moderation aren't necessarily going to be bad. Um, you know, because it's a good, you know, starches aren't bad. They're not necessarily good, but they're not bad. You know, salt, depending how much sodium you put in your body. I mean, but the water's probably flushing a lot of that out, you know, that's also helped him. Whatever he put in, the water is basically flushing his system out as well. That's so. another good point there because, you know, for his levels to drop, that had to have happened. Yeah, I mean, I could sit here and tell you I smoke crack for 100 days and lose weight. That doesn't mean that everybody should do it and that it's going to be healthy. Although, you know, <laughs> Big Show's 100% crack diet. For nineteen ninety five, email us and I will give you the recipe. Oh Lord, this this is slightly warped though. So uh, yeah, slightly. <laughs> All right, let's get to the brass tax here. But good, but good for him. You know, yeah, going back yeah. There, good for him. You know, any way to make a quick buck, do it. Absolutely. Now I want to talk about the National Football League. Bum, 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 bum. We started talking about this last week, and I did not uh, have the uh, full thing here. I do today, and I want to talk about every NFL team's all-time passing leader. There's going to be some surprises on this list show. So we're going to go in order, and I want your thoughts. Now, the first one, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Miami Dolphins, Dan Marino. I can see that. Because they haven't had a good, consistent quarterback since. Well, I mean, Dan Marino led the entire NFL in passing for years. Yeah. So, yeah, that doesn't make, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Now we go to the other end of the spectrum. The New York Jets' all-time leading passer is still Joe Namath. Didn't he stop playing in the 60s? Uh, let's see. I want to say early 70s he did. 
Let's see. The Chiefs won their what Super Bowl number four in nineteen sixty nine seventy. Yeah. The Jets won it the year before, and I, I, I didn't Joe Namath end his career with the Rams. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah. Or the Chargers or something like that. It was the Rams. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that, that is a little surprising. Oh, it's going to get better. Uh, <clears throat> now, number three, we get this one. For the New England Patriots, Tom Brady, I can see that. He, he played long enough. He should lead his team. Well, he actually leads the NFL. He is the number one guy in the NFL. That is true. Longevity will do that for you. Uh, the next one, I could see it too. Jim Kelly for the Buffalo Bills. That's a low number. 35,000. That is a low number. I mean, compared to Joe Namath, he's busting out. But if, and I know we, we kind of harp on um, the Bills' current quarterback, but if he has a little bit of longevity, he can crack that in today's passing league. Josh Allen, but it's going to take a lot, and it's going to take how some many, longevity. How many? How many? Where is Josh Allen at right now? That I do not know. I don't have that info. Well, stand by for said info. Awesome. Now, while you look that up, I'm going to skip the Buffalo Bills and go to the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Joe Flacco, I can see that. Because Flacco was the face of the Ravens for quite some time. 38,000, I get that. And now that your boy has got that deal signed, you never know. Oh, he ain't going to break that. <laughs> Now, he might rush for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's not going to, he's definitely not going to break that. This one, this one disturbs me. This tells me how inept this uh, team is. The uh, Cleveland Browns, their all time leading passer is Brian Syke, and he only has 23,000 yards. Brian Sype. Really? They haven't had a good quarterback since then? How many years did he play? Don't know. I think he retired in either the late 70s or early 80s, but my goodness. You would think that you would have had a decent quarterback somewhere in there. But then when you really think about it, the Browns were notorious for um, getting all these high draft QBs that didn't pan out. So let's say that uh, Josh Allen plays another six years because mm -hmm. he's played for them six years now, six full seasons. Well, not six full seasons. He started, he only played 12 games his rookie year, but. He's at 18,397 yards for his career. So he's halfway there now. So, mm -hmm. And yeah, he has he, the he benefit be... of the NFL having 17 game seasons now. Exactly. So, yeah, he he could, he could he should be able to smash that. I'd say before he's done, he'd probably be in the high 40s, low 50s. I can see that. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, Ken Anderson, Kenny Anderson is the all time leading passer in the Bengals. That, that kind of surprised me because I thought Boomer would, would be higher up there, but you know, Bo Ken Boomer, Anderson... had, Boomer had a lot of those seasons with the Jets too. So, well, no, majority of Boomers were with the Bengals. I mean, he took them to two Super Bowls and they both lost to the 49ers, but uh, that's true, you know, I. Ken Anderson was the quarterback before Boomer. So, yeah, I could see that. And this one we could really see. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger over 60,000 yards. Yeah, that's that not coming down anytime soon. That number is astonishing for how high it is. I didn't think he threw for that many yards. I didn't think so either. That's but, a lot of yards. Yeah, it is. This one, 
I kind of see, but I kind of didn't. Mark Brunel for the Jags. So it's one of those ones like the uh, the Browns. You start thinking about it and you say, well, yeah, who else have they had since then? So I get that. Well, That's I, think a low Mark number. Was, I think Mark was their first quarterback in their franchise history. He was. When they became. And, I mean, they've only had, what, a new starter every other year or so. Now the guy they've got in there now, I think, yeah. has a shot. Yeah, oh yeah, he'll he'll crush it. Yeah. Especially if they keep the coach that they got right now. Yeah, definitely. With the uh Texans, Matt Schaub is their all time leading passer. So it's only twenty three thousand yards, but do we think that anybody's gonna crack that anytime soon in Houston? I don't think so. Well, I mean anytime soon though. Uh, next five years, maybe. And that's with the rookie, C.J. Stroud, who just got that drafted. That is true. Now, the next team, Indianapolis Colts. This record ain't coming down anytime soon at all. Peyton Manning with 54,000, almost 55,000 yards. It ain't going nowhere. Especially if they keep hiring retreads. Pretty much. Um, This one is where I have a problem. The Tennessee Titans, they've got Warren Moon listed. I really wish this record was as an oiler because it Warren is. Moon never played as a Titan. This should be um, Steve McNair as a Titan. Well, the same, same franchise. Mm, yeah. All, all the records went with them. That's true, but I mean, if they would have split it, I could live with that. Hey, now you're going to have to live with it anyway. Well, yeah, that's true. Here's <laughs> one that ain't coming down anytime soon. Philip, Philip, 59,000. He's got more than Peyton. I couldn't believe that. But then he did play for a good long time. Phil Rivers. Yeah, and, I'm actually surprised at that one, too. I'm curious. Uh, because I would have thought Stan Humphreys had that, but I guess not. Oh, heck no. So Stan Humphreys was only their quarterback for like maybe three, maybe four years. Maybe. Hmm. I could swear he was there longer, but again, what do I know? I just work here. Um. Well, man, I could be wrong too, but I, I, I don't think so. Hold on here. I'm, I'm looking for... I want to see. Go ahead. We, we talked about the Chiefs one last week. Yeah, I mean, Lynn Dawson is number one right now, but that's not going to hold up. At least, if it doesn't fall this year, it's going to fall next year. Mahomes has got that. In Denver, um, John Elway's got that on lock, 51,000 passing yards. That's not coming down anytime soon. In no, not unless they get an actual... Uh... Quarterback, you know, franchise quarterback. That's true. But at 50-something thousand yards, it would have to be a franchise quarterback that would have to play at least six or seven years and ball out. I'd have to play there for a decade or so. Yeah. To get 51,000. That's true. I mean, because you're not going to throw 10,000 yards in five years, every five you're, years. You're a bad man if you do. Uh, In Vegas, Derek Carr is the uh, leader there. Um, I know that that's surprising. He just barely got it. Uh, uh, not last year, but the year before he passed Ken Stabler. That's surprising. It, it didn't surprise me because Kenny wasn't there in Oakland very long. I was surprised that Stabler was the all time leader because I would have thought it was Jim Plunkett who played longer than Stabler. But I guess Stabler was slinging that rock. Let me see. In New York, this one, it's going to stand for a little while. Daniel Jones might be their guy, but Eli Manning's got the record. Um, In Dallas, that's the one that's surprising. Tony Romo? I mean, I didn't think he was there that long and through that much. If you would have told me Troy Aikman has the record, I wouldn't even blink because I would have believed you. But apparently Romo has got the record. 
Yeah, that, that doesn't that doesn't really surprise me because even Troy, Troy was not a statistically, you know, MVP passer rating type of guy. They had Emmett yeah. Smith. Now that is true. he was he was completely accurate. I mean, he probably threw for 250, 300 yards a game, roughly. You know, I you know, give or take, he'd have really good games. But they were that that offense ran through Emmett Smith. That's true. In Washington, but another thing too is that Eli Eli Manning has more than Peyton Manning. Did you see that? I just noticed that. Yeah, but I mean, Peyton technically has more yardage, but he has those years in Denver, so they don't really count. True that. So, well, yeah, I would like to see because what Warren Moon had the years with Seattle and Minnesota too. So, and he plays his yards in Kansas more City. Uh, he never really took a snap for them in a regular season game but yeah he suited up for us that's also true donovan mcnab philadelphia eagles i can see that but if you would if you would have told me to pick off the top of my head i probably would have went with randall cunningham but then if that's the same as the lamar aspect he probably ran more than he threw so I if you would have quizzed me last week who would have been i would have um. Oh, who was the one who uh, starts with an M? Back in the eighties, Michael Vick was oh, no wait, wrong team. Michael Vick did not play in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back too far. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, me, me, uh, uh it's not Marinovich because I know that dude played for the Raiders. Yeah, he but, sucked. Uh, the, well, he took the Eagles to the Super Bowl and they lost. And now he and now he's a NFL now analyst for ESPN. Been there for years. Huh. Oh my goodness! I I can see his face, but if I would have said, you know, if you would have quizzed me last year, I probably would have said him before Donovan McNabb because I think Donovan, but Donovan being coached by Andy Reid, I can see that as well. That is also true. In Green Bay. No, it's not Aaron Rodgers. It's Brett Favre. And now it's physically impossible for Rodgers to catch him because Rodgers is no longer there. Minnesota, Fran Tarkington, even though that... Ron Jaworski. I said him. Thank you. Ron Jaworski. Okay. That's what it was. All right. Okay. I. All right. Now I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Frank Tarkington. Dolls. Yep. I can see that. Here's one, Matt Stafford, even though he's gone now. I can see that. He's still got the record, and he's going to have it for a little while at 45,000 yards. Here's one I did not see. Jay Cutler in Chicago. Did he really sling it like that in Chicago? I don't remember that. I mean... Obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, but no, he wasn't. And 23,000 in the grand scheme of things isn't really that much. That is also that puts him in That puts him in the Brian Sipen, Matt Schaub's, you know, category. That is also true. Records that can fall. And, and the difference between uh, Houston and uh, Baltimore than Chicago, Chicago has a quarterback now that can sling it he does run a lot with his legs but he can sling it so fields yeah yeah I it, it, it is very feasible that that record could fall in a few years now back to one that won't go anywhere for a few years drew Brees, 68 grand that record ain't going nowhere for a long time a long time so he, he's still the face of that franchise even retirement and because he brought them a Super Bowl, he probably can eat free wherever he goes. Right. And if you're listening, Drew, eat at McDonald's. You'll lose some weight. <laughs> Here's one that should have fell this year, but won't. Jameis Winston is the leader in Tampa Bay. Had Tom stayed for one more year, I think he would have broke that record. Because Winston has the lowest total on this list, 19,000. 
Yeah, I was curious what Tom Brady had with them. That's what I was trying to find. While you while you check that out. Cam Newton, I can see that for the Carolina Panthers. So twenty nine thousand. It's pretty good. For that's Cam. actually that's actually a lot more than I thought. Mm hmm. So it's, here is the answer <laughs> for Brady. So how Brady played what three seasons? Yes, fourteen thousand six hundred and forty three yards. That's what he has for Tampa Bay. Oh, he could have broke it. He could have broke it. Now, that would have been something to lead two teams at the top of the passing <laughs> yeah. list. That would, as if he doesn't already own enough NFL records. Yeah, because I think totally he's almost at 90,000. Uh, yeah, 89,214 yards total in his career. Mm. He could have hit 100K. If he wanted, <sighs> what could be? Hey, he might he might get it for the Raiders. You never know. Yeah, I'm not going there this week. <laughs> but on, on on this next person, I got a dual question. I see this one: Matt Ryan for the Falcons, fifty five thousand yards. I can definitely see that. The question I want to ask you about Ryan went to Super Bowl. They had that epic collapse against the Patriots. Once he retires, five years after, actually, you think uh, Matt Ryan is going to the Hall? Well, let's look at some players that are on the list that are in the Hall. He's got more yards than Jim Kelly. He's got more yards than Joe Namath. He's got more yards than John Elway. He's got more yards than Troy Aikman because obviously Tony Romo's got more yards than Troy Aikman. More loads than the guy next to loads. More yards than the guys next to him, Montana. Yeah, I would say he probably he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, but I I bet you he gets in eventually. I believe that he gets in too. Now, as far as first ballot or not, I believe it's going to be depending on when he retires, who all's on his ballot. I don't think it matters. When I say first time, I just I don't think he'll get it immediately after his five years is up. I, I don't care who it is. That's true. Is now, he is he is he actually playing this year? Did he or did he retire? Now that I, I'd have to check that because uh, I guarantee you, five years from now, Tom Brady will be inducted. <laughs> oh yeah, so it would be in his best interest for Matt Ryan to not retire yet, go another year. Don't be on the same ballot as Brady or you. I don't think anybody else is going to get in the year Tom Brady does. It's all going to be about Tom Brady. <laughs> it might. It'll be interesting to see who he has do his induction speech for him. I mean, his uh -huh. it'll probably be Belichick. That That's where the smart money is. Him or Kraft, depending on, you know. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, Next up, Joe Montana. I can see that. I can see that because he was there for a good while and they had some pretty good years. If Steve Young had been on there, I could see that too. Yeah. And and I'm actually surprised that it's not I'm curious how close they were. I'm looking at it real quick. Okay. Yeah. Steve Young is at was at thirty three one twenty four. So, so it 2000, was close. Yeah, two thousand Yards to the yard, even because he's 33 124 and Joe was 35 124. So it just goes to show you it makes a difference what a Warren Sapp hit can do to you when you that yeah. close, or if Joe would have been hurt one year earlier. Also true because Joe does have a lot more yards, they're just with Kansas City. I wouldn't know, he probably has another. I would say I I would be surprised if he has another 3,000 yards with Kansas City in the two years he was here. Was it just two or was it three? 93 and 94. Those were the two years he was here. Hmm, okay. Because 95, Steve Bono came in. That's 92, true. 92, Dave Craig was the quarterback. 
Well, thanks to him anyway, they introduced grass into uh, Arrowhead Stadium. Yeah, his final year, 1994. Next up, Rusty. Russell Wilson with 37K in Seattle. I say he did it with that, smoke and mirrors, but, you know. That's surprising. Well, I don't know his first... How many years did he play in Seattle? Mm, 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 mm. Don't know when he came in the league, so I'm not sure. Well, I, I was a little low on that deal with the Chiefs. He had 5,400 yards with the Chiefs. No okay. surprise. Surprise. That's not bad for two years. You know. I just did I just didn't think he had that many yards. But going on to Russell Wilson, that doesn't surprise me because they haven't had historically good quarterback play in Seattle. Also true. You want a surprise? This one is a surprise for the Rams. Jim Everett? Really? How does that how does that surprise you? Jim name me Everett? Name me another quarterback that that had that played more than three years with that team. Ooh, hold on. Let me think. Let me think. This is going to exactly. strain my brain, but wow. It, you know, and that was the early 90s. You talk about the Browns or the Texans. You get that when they haven't had anything but crap quarterbacks. You would think. Rams that, had nothing but crap quarterbacks. Yeah, but you would think that somewhere in there the Rams would have had a superstar. Yes, not. Jim Everett was it. I mean, Rams were the laughing stock. I mean, although I'm I'm how close was Kurt Warner to that list? Exactly. So they did have Kurt Warner, but I guess they didn't have him long enough. I need you to look that up because Kurt had to be close. Because that was that was the epitome. What do they call that? The greatest show on turf? Yeah, but that was only two years, three years that that was. Kurt's got to be close to 20,000 yards. I mean, his... Kurt Warner's career is only 32,344 yards. Yeah, that's right. Because he played a little bit with the Giants and the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm going to add this up. It's less than, it looks like it's less than 10,000 yards with the, with the, uh, with the Rams. Ew, okay. Never oh, mind no, I, I, I missed, no, I missed a year. Hold on. Plus 34, plus. 453 plus 39. Yeah, he only had 12,651 yards with the Rams. Wow. He had three. He only played two full seasons with the Rams. Uh, in 98, he only played one game and had uh, four throws or four completions out of 11 attempts for 39 yards. 1999, they won the Super Bowl. He threw for 4,353 yards. 2000, he only played 11 games because he hurt his, he broke his thumb or hurt his thumb or something like that. He had 3,429 yards. And mm -hmm. his last year in St. Louis, uh, was 2001, which is the year they lost to the Patriots. He had 4,830 yards. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, yeah, so, yeah. I, I guess his run was a little bit shorter than I thought. And if I go back, I'm just curious. Curious how many years Jim Everett played. You know, to get 23 grand, I mean, he had to have played at least five years. Let's see, you're saying five years in today's NFL. This was late eighties, early nineties that he played. Yeah. So that it's a whole different football game. That's true. He I played twelve seasons. Wow. Twelve 
seasons. 12. And has 23,758 yards. I'm curious, is he only played for... When I think of Jim Everett, all I can see is that episode of Jim Rome's podcast where he kept calling Jim Everett Chris Everett, as in the tennis yeah. player. And then the dude went and he choked. It was he jumped up and was going to beat up Jim Rome. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He played eight years for the Rams from nineteen eighty six to 1993 and then he played for New Orleans for the next three years and his last year he was with the Chargers in 97 when he retired mm. okay oh that's right because he's the guy that New Orleans traded him away so they could get Breeze because Breeze was Ooh. a charger. And Marty didn't want him because he thought that his shoulder was not going to be good. Because he had an injured shoulder. So that would... Marty Marty wanted him. Marty okay. did not... It was uh, but, the owner. The owner that did not want Breeze. But I don't know if that... you I, you might You might be right on that. Because as I recall, the Chargers, I want to say the Chargers and the Saints traded quarterbacks. And I'm pretty sure it was Everett that went to the, excuse me, that went to the Chargers and Breeze went to the Saints. See, we have Big Show as our statistician on this show, so. Um, that. Uh-oh, did you hit the mute button? Am I back? Yes, now we're, now I we got it. Okay, so that was wrong, because Breeze got traded, because Marty Schottenheimer was coaching the Chiefs in 97. Uh, and Bru Breeze didn't get traded to 2006. Okay. Never mind then. These two teams swap quarterbacks multiple times then. But it looks like the Chargers never traded Drew Brees. They just did not increase it. He was a free agent. And so he received this, his outright release then? Yeah, according to this, um, the Chargers made an offer, and they wouldn't increase it. The, Nor the New Orleans Saints and the Miami Dolphins both made an offer. Uh, New Orleans made an offer that included $10 million in guaranteed money the first year and $12 million the second year, and he signed with the Saints. Hmm. And the Chargers would not match it. Yeah, I'm wondering what the Chargers think of that now. But I'm curious because I'm pretty sure right about that time was when Phillip Rivers was drafted. Well, the Chargers drafted Eli Manning, and then they traded him to the Giants for Phillip Rivers. But uh, Phillip. I think you are right because I think the owner wanted to play Phillip Rivers and didn't want to pay Drew Brees. Because you mentioned that money. and. Uh, Yeah, that's what it is, because Philip Rivers was drafted in 2004. Drew Brees was let go in 2006. They didn't honor his contract, so that's when Philip um, took over. Okay. And that makes sense here. Now, we got one more on this list that is a head-scratcher. Jim Hart is the all-time leading passer for the Cardinals. And, and one more thing real quick before we – my man Philip Rivers played 17 years in the NFL. That's a good while right there. 16 of them with the Chargers. Mm -hmm. 
Jim Hart, never heard of him. Me either. Um, thirty four thousand yards though, so he he did some work back then. Man, but see now you got. I'm gonna look that up because that's a lot of yards for that day and age. Not just that, but it's like, have the Cardinals not had anybody good since Jim Hart? Apparently not. And I know all you people are screaming, well, they got Kyler Murray. Yeah, Kyler Murray's not going to catch him. Oh, sure he will. 35,000 yards in this day and age. What is that? Six years at 5,000 yards? Seven years at what? 4,000 yards? Eight years at 4,500 yards? Whatever that is. They better get him some wide receivers then. Um. Wow. And this he this this was the St. Louis Cardinals. So this was back he, back in the day. He played for them. No way. One two. Three. How many how many seasons did Tom Brady play? 21? I believe so. Jim Hart played 19 seasons. So he was the Iron Man back then. And 18 of those was with St. Louis. He played from 1966 to 1984. Wow. He played for the Cardinals in the 80s, and I don't remember this dude's name at all. Uh, he played for this the entire 70s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But 66, so and it looked like he averaged between 2,500 and 3,000 yards a year with the exception of 1969, 71-72, and then 81 and up. Because after St. Louis, he went to Washington in 1984. Looks like he only played two games. Well, and then I... I'm curious, because it doesn't tell me how many games he played in 66, 67, 68, or 69. Those are blank, but he has stats. In 66, he only had 29 yards, so I'm assuming that's one game. But in 67, the man passed for 3,000 yards in 1967. Mm. So that and then in that they were either a pass-happy offense or he had no running backs. Well, he wasn't accurate. He only he had 19 touchdowns, but he had 30 picks Ooh. that year, that year. And he has more interceptions and touchdowns career-wise. 209 touchdowns, 247 interceptions. Hmm. But yeah, he averaged 211 yards a game passing uh, from 70 to 84. They wow. don't really have, for some reason, they don't add all that up from 66. Like he did, like maybe he, well, no, 67, they just don't have how many games they played. But he went 3,000, then 2,000, then 1,100, and 2,500. I would say this though. Um, hats off to yeah. Jim Hart because that dude, the Iron Man boys, be before the Iron Man. Yeah. Boys and girls, that is your history lesson for the Cardinals quarterbacks. Pretty much. So, show, before we get out of here, do you have anything for us today? Would you mean like a joke or something? No joke? Anything you want to share with us? Anything? Well, I do have a joke for today, and I'll share that in a minute. Um, well, hell, we'll just do it now. So, <clears throat> a guy meets a recreational uh, uh, reptile. In the trucking business, we call those lot lizards. Uh, they are you know, sex workers nights. So he meets one 
at the bar and she looks at him and says, you know what, big boy, it's your lucky night. Um, I got a special going on for you and I'll do absolutely anything you want for $300. As long as you can say it in three words. The guy replies, why not? He pulls his wallet out of his pocket, hands the lady $300, looks deep in her eye and says, baby, paint my house. Ah, uh, now the question uh, is, did he get a refund? Because I'm pretty sure oh, the no, answer. No. She said anything for, for, for $300. He has to say it in three words. I'm sure all you naughty-minded people out there were thinking of different three words. I don't know about naughty-minded, but yeah, I was thinking of a different three words. For sure. Pull my finger. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> all right. But on that note, everybody, don't forget to uh, hit the like button. Then hit that subscribe button. And if you and have then, anything uh, that you want to share with us or talk to us about, ask us. Make sure that you uh, hit us up. We got email. The Slightly Warped Podcast all together at yahoo.com. Really do want to appreciate everybody that's uh, been tuning in. Tell your friends all the good stuff. Tell your friends. Remember. Friends. Yes, Husbands, yes. tell your wives and your girlfriends. Yes, yes. Tell all your side pieces. And women, and we know y'all get down like that too, so you do the same. Yes, yes, yes. And this day and age, boyfriends tell your boyfriends, girlfriends tell your girlfriends. Yes, we, we don't skip anybody. We love everybody. All right, take us on out of here, show. All right, y'all. Thanks again for watching. God bless you. Love your family. Love your loved ones. Tell the people that you love them. Tomorrow is not promised. Do not let another day go by without telling someone exactly what is on your mind. See you next week. See you guys. Thank you.